Hello everybody, I'm Virtual SG, and before we dive into the nitty gritty of making tiles and patterns in Clip Studio Paint, I'm going to talk about materials in general so that we all have a solid understanding of just what we are trying to achieve when we make tiles or patterns. Under the edit menu we will find the register material category, and we can see that materials come in three varieties, image, template, and animation. These three material categories cover a wide variety of uses, which I will tell you about as we go along here. There is a fourth category, and that would be 3D material, but 3D material is only accessible through a 3D layer, which I will not be discussing in this video. Now, you'll notice that all three of these categories are grayed out right now, and that's because I do not have a project loaded, and I can't register any materials out of thin air, so let's get a project started. For use of work, I'll just choose illustration to keep the options at a minimum. We'll call the project 1 and make sure the unit is set for pixels. These settings are fine with me, 1000 by 1000. I don't care about resolution because I'm working with pixel dimensions. I always start my projects in color. My paper color is checked and set for 100% white, which is not how I usually work, but that's not important right now. And I won't be demonstrating templates till later, and I don't want this, and I don't want this. Okay, now when I go to edit, register material, you see that I can choose from image and template. The reason animation is grayed out is because I haven't converted this project to an animation project. And animation, like 3D, is a whole subject unto itself, so let's just stick with image and template materials because they are the foundations of what materials are good for in the first place, and we haven't even gotten to creating tiles and patterns anyway, so let's just forget about animation right now. Let's focus directly on image right now. What is an image material? Well, it's quite simple. Image material is a layer. Literally just a layer like this one. But instead of being here in the layers palette, it's saved in a special folder. Sort of like a file that you can use in any project at any time. And in order to demonstrate this, I first have to show you the materials palette. So this is the materials palette. I keep it collapsed over here. I'm going to pull it out and delete it. And then I'm going to collapse these. And you find a materials palette under window, materials, and this is a contextual list of material folders. It updates depending on what material folders you've recently had open. You should see one here called All Materials. But if you don't see that, there's nothing to worry about. Just choose anything from this menu. But I'm going to grab this one. And it opens as a floating window. And then I'm going to drag it over here and dock it like this. This is how I like it. Now if I click the double arrow, it collapses to a sliver. And I'll open it back up. And if I click the single arrow, it collapses like this. And I like to use the single arrow collapse. It's up to you, but I just want to make sure you understand what's happening as I navigate these palettes. So the interesting thing here is that you can go back to Window, Material, and open another Materials folder, and it opens another Materials palette, and you can dock that palette right here alongside this one. Now I'll collapse these so we just focus on this, because what's weird is if I choose another folder in here, this has now updated to that folder. So if I collapse this and go to that folder, it's now updated to the last folder I was looking in, instead of the one I put there in the first place. So what this means is that if I go to this folder, which is all materials, the master folder as it were, and then I go to this color pattern folder, this icon has updated the same way. So what I'm demonstrating here is that while you can dock a hundred different folders here, they're all going to update contextually according to the last one you were rummaging through. So I'm not sure I understand the point of being able to dock them here like this, and until I understood what was happening, this was driving me crazy because I had a bunch of folders here, and I couldn't understand why I couldn't keep track of which one was which. I guess there's some sort of logic to it, but I'm just going to get rid of this and just have this one here, which gives me access to all the folders at any time anyway. So I just wanted to give you a heads up about that. And with that out of the way, let's get back on track. The purpose of accessing this palette in the first place is to create a new folder. You see, these folders here are all my folders, folders I've created. 
and these are Clip Studio's default folders. They're all loaded with lots of materials by default. Before creating any materials though, I strongly suggest you create at least one folder you can call your own. You make a new folder by going here and clicking new folder, or I can just right click anywhere in here and choose new folder, and then rename it. And then I can organize this whole thing the same way I would any file system. I can go to a default folder and grab some material and put it in my own folder like so. And now that material is in my folder, which makes me happy. But that was just a demonstration. I actually don't want this in here, so I'll put it back where I got it. And I actually don't want this folder at all, so I'll click it and choose delete. I get a little warning box. I know there's nothing in this folder, so I hit yes and it's gone. So you'll notice that I have a folder called test bin in here. Even in my brush folder, this is my brush folder that I created, which contains different kinds of brush materials that I've created. And even in here, I have a test folder. As you can see, this folder is full of a bunch of weird experiments. You get the idea. So I'm trying to encourage you to make your own folder and the ball is in your court now because it's time to practice making some image material. So let's do some testing. Let's make some image materials. All right, I'm going to collapse this and open these back up and then I'm going to just make a monster the way I would normally. I'm just basically drawing a picture of a monster in Clip Studio Paint, like I so often do. All right, I'm gonna call this done, and I've got some layers hidden here because I'm going to use them for later for all this stuff that I'm about to demonstrate. But let's start with the idea that I have this drawing on a single layer, and I might want to save this drawing and use it for another project later. The fact is that I could just save the project and copy-paste the layer from one project to another. I've done that many times. I could also export a PNG file and then import the PNG file to any project that I like. I've done that a hundred times. And if you understand those two ideas, then you have a complete understanding of what image materials are and why they're useful. So I'm going to save this drawing as image material. I go to Edit, Register Materials, Image, and I get the Material Property window where I will configure the properties for this material. Now the most important thing right off the bat, the image material is saved with transparency and is limited to the image itself, not the canvas size. So the first thing I will do is name this. I'll call it OctoThing1. Now these checkboxes are for assigning the material to brush settings, but I'm not going to talk about brush settings, so I'm not going to demonstrate how this works. But I will tell you that if I did want to make a brush with this material and I don't assign it to these brush settings, I won't be able to find it later and it just won't work. So these are important when creating brushes, but not useful at all for what I'm doing right now. And next we have scale up and down settings and these can be very handy and I'll demonstrate that a little later. Tiling is the key to creating tiles and patterns. I'll show you that after we cover the basics and specify order is something that is probably quite useful when you know you'll be working with lots of different kinds of layers. This is not necessary to me right now, but if you're actually making a comic book or using lots of effects layers and whatnot, this ability to predetermine where the material layer ends up in the hierarchy is worth exploring. Now I have to choose a folder. I won't be able to save unless I choose a folder, which is great because that means this will only be saved where I tell it to be saved. The software won't just file it away in some mystery location, and that's why I so strongly suggested you create your own folder, because there's nothing more frustrating than forgetting where you saved your stuff, and it's hard enough to keep track of my own folders, but it's even worse if I forgot where to even look, so I'm going to put this in my test folder. Of course, later I can make a new folder and move things around however I see fit. You can just stick with the default folders if you want, but I refuse to do that. And finally, it's a good idea to create a search tag. This is for a catch-all word I might use in case I've got lots of custom materials, and I click this little tag icon, and I'll just use the word octo, and then years from now, if I want to find all the octopus materials I've created, I can just use this search term to find them all assuming I've given them all this search tag or something similar. 
Now I've considered every option, it's time to hit OK. And then I'll just delete this layer, but it's actually not gone at all because I just saved it as image material. So if I go to my materials palette, it's the first one listed in all materials specifically because I just created it. Now if I'm in another folder, you can see it doesn't show up. Only the files specific to that folder are in there. But if I use my tag in this search bar, it's the only material I have with that tag, so it's the only result I get. And don't confuse this search bar with this search for materials thing. This is not a search bar. This will trigger your browser to fetch the Clip Studio Assets website, which is great if you want to go to the Clip Studio Assets website, but it's a real pain in the ass when all you wanted to do was search one of your tags. Okay, so I know this is in my test bin, and I can drag this right onto the canvas. And it's a layer like any other layer. This is literally identical to what I had here before I went through all these motions and deleted the original layer. This is really just a copy of that original layer. When you drag an image material into the project, Clip Studio automatically switches to the object tool so I can move it around. Or you could use the move layer tool. And I could draw on this layer. I can do anything I would do on a regular layer because this is just a regular layer. I can also drag the materials to the layers palette like this. Now I have two of these. Also, I can replace a layer by making sure I get this red box indicator, and you can see it's replaced the one that was there, and uh, add a third, and a fourth, and so on. Now I'll delete these layers, and now I'm going to edit this material. I go to this gear icon, it says show properties. Well, it doesn't just show the properties, you can change the properties. It just opens the material property window like when we first registered it. And I'm going to check this box to set it to scale up and down. Now there are a few different methods to choose from. You can check them out on your own, but I'm just going to leave it set for the default, adjust after pasting, and you'll get the idea. That's all I want here, so I click OK. And now when I drag it into my project, it's not a normal layer. It's an object layer. And this image is the object in that layer, and I can resize it like this. Of course, I could use the Marquee tool to select the other one and resize that way, but the point is, this one is brought in as an object material, and you can see why this is useful. So just remember it's an object layer, it has certain limitations, but if I need to, I can just rasterize it like this. Now I'll delete these layers and make this folder visible, and here is the octopus as I made him on multiple layers. You see his skin is on one layer, his eye is on another, the shadows and shiny parts are on this layer, and this is the pencil layer. So I've got four layers here, and I'm going to select all four of them using the checkboxes. Now I can register these four layers as material. So Clip Studio is trying to name it based on one of the layer names, but I'll just call this Octo Thing 2. And I choose the folder, give it a tag, and you'll notice that I can't select some of the options here. Such is the nature of a multi-layered material. And now I'll hide this, and then when I bring OctoThing2 into the project, you guessed it, all four layers. Now I'll delete those layers and point out that having multiple layers inside of a folder is so that I don't have to select each layer every time I want to move them or edit them or whatever. And if you haven't guessed by now, I can just select the folder and register that as a material. I'll call this one Octo3. Most of the options are disabled for the same reason as last time. Select the folder, enter the tag, press OK, and I'm just going to delete this folder from my project. And over here I've got my OctoThing 3 material, and it's a perfect replica of what I just deleted. Now I'll merge the folder so that it's just a single layer, grab my lasso tool, and select this guy's eye, and when I register image, it's going to reference only the selected area. And if I delete everything and then bring in OctoThing 3, select each layer with the check marks and then lasso the eye, register image, you see I've got all four layers. Now I'm going to delete everything in this project. Then I'm going to edit OctoThing 3, so that he's just octo thing. Then I'm going to enable check marks here and select all these materials except octo thing and delete them. 
because I know that Octo thing is everything I started with in a folder and I can just grab him anytime I want. So I can grab another one and edit him however I like. I'm going to rename these folders so I know which is which and I can make a new image material for the green one and so that's why image materials are useful. But let me show you one more important thing about image materials that's lots of fun. First I need to grab one of these, merge the folder so that it's a single layer, register image, I'm going to call this Octo Tile because this time I'm going to check the tile box. Uh, these choices here I don't need to go over because when you choose one the results are previewed right here so you can see what they do. But it's most often the case that I'm just going to leave this at default. Now when I grab this guy, he is tiling the entire canvas and resize it and move it around and that's all very cool. So you might think that's all there is to making patterns and while technically that is all there is to it, the actual creation of a pattern can be a far more nuanced affair and I will talk about that more in another video. So I hope you found all this useful and I'll be back with another video real soon.